Okay, there it is. It's a <clears throat> eye round roast. It's three pounds and just a couple ounces over. We're gonna. I've got salt and pepper on it. It's in a dry pan. No water. No nothing else on it. That's the way it goes in the oven at 500 degrees. And uh, oven just hit 500, so I'm gonna put it in there now. Well, okay, there it is. Cooked it at well, like I say, we had the oven preheated at uh, 500 degrees. Uh, put salt and pepper on it. Put it in the in the roasting pan into the oven, and immediately turned it down to 475 from 500. Cooked it for 21 minutes, seven minutes a pound. After 21 minutes, I just turned the oven off and left it in there for two hours and 30 minutes. And this is what we got. Let's see what it looks like. Let's give it a shot here. Bad burger. Slice it thin or thick if I want to. That's a little bit too thin. salt on it because I know it's not going to be salty enough for me. And I know that. Oh my goodness. It is so tender. That, uh, that piece of beef came from Walmart. I usually buy my beef at Apollo Beach Meat Market or at Sam's Club. Sam's has some excellent beef, steaks and pork chops. But I went to Walmart and got this. I didn't want to get the most expensive cut of meat. I wanted to get as low end as I could. Paid four dollars and twenty three cents a pound for it. And it's turned out just about wonderful. Medium rare to rare. I don't probably when I get way back in there it'll be a little more rare. But it looks mighty good to me. Make a little of juice up here now and got my rutabagas all done. Biscuits in the oven and we'll be eating here directly. I can't think of anything else I need to tell you about it. I believe that pretty well gets it done. Now we won't eat all this tonight. It's three pounds of it. I'll probably slice it up and freeze it in individual slices so we can have it for sandwiches or whenever. We can have some more of it with mashed taters or whatever. Sure does look good. Okay. See you shortly. Okay, this is not the end of the video. There's uh there's going to be more after this on the second part of the meal, but give you time to, you can stop the video here and write these instructions down if you want. And after that, we'll go on to part two, where we'll complete the meal. Now the next part of the meal is going to be rutabagas. And I'm getting ready to cut them up now with the, the uh, before I got this tool right here, they were kind of hard to cut, but uh, this thing really does a good job with them. And I'm cutting them on an old, oh, it's shape of a fish of a wooden cutting board that Kathy's son made for her when he was in high school. And that was about junior high school, junior high school she just said. And, and with Kathy's age, that was probably about 90 years ago. Or uh, maybe less than that. But anyway, haha, <laughs> she's laughing. All right, all I have to do is push down on this, and look how easy it goes through that thing. And I don't have a great deal of strength, but look at that. And you're gonna go over here, and you're gonna cut that off. And cut that in. Incidentally, I use the small rutabagas. I think they're a little bit sweeter. They taste a little bit better than the great old big ones. Just have to do a little bit more cutting on them. Actually, they're easier to cut than the great big ones are. And that's it. See, it gives you a nice, what do you call that, a julienne cut? I don't know what you call it anyway. It's got ruffles have ridges, I guess. <clears throat> now, 
there's several ways you could do this. Once you get to this point, just cut them in oh, however big you want. That'll work there. That'll work there. That'll work there. And that'll work there. Then, if you got two good hands to use, which I don't, you can take a good sharp knife and you know the deal, you just go around it and peel it off like that, but since I can't use both hands, I just I do it the quicker way like this for me, it's easier for me to do it. You get all this waxy peel off of it and I'm not going to do but one or two of these things and that'll give you the idea instead of putting you through all my silly sense of humor while I'm doing this. Once you get it done like that, let's do a couple of them. Let's do a couple of them. Let's turn him over there. Cut him off. Cut him off. Cut him off. Cut him off. You can really, really do a lot of rutabagas really quick with this. Once you get it to that point, come back here with your little slicer. Chip it. Chip it. Chip it. Chip it. I, I generally take mine the longer pieces and just cut them into little cubes. I like them smaller like this. Now, Kathy likes hers, and this is the way I cook them in a pot like this. I'll show you put them in a the pot after a while. And then once they're done, I just eat them just like that. With the flavor of the salt and pepper and the bacon that I cook them in. But, Kathy likes hers mashed. What do you like, sugar and... Uh, no sugar, butter and salt and pepper. Sugar, butter, salt no and pepper. No sugar. No sugar. No sugar. She's saying no sugar. So I just mash some of them up for her and she puts whatever it is she wants on them. And I wouldn't be surprised to see her put M&Ms on them, but I think she puts salt and pepper and butter. I just eat mine like they straight out of the cow. Okay, I'm going to turn this off now and go cutting the rest of them. Okay, what I got going now, I'm getting ready to put the uh, rutabagas on the stove and in my pot here, I've got some bacon. I use a lot of bacon because I love bacon. Uh, they got a lot of sell all that weight eating sub that Subway sub shop. Well, I'll tell you one thing, nobody ever lost weight eating my cooking. But anyway, you can put as little or as much bacon in here as you want or anything else you want to season, season the water with to uh, cook your rutabagas. But that's, that's where it starts right there. And a few minutes, I'll add a little bit of water to that. I'll take some of that grease out of there, and then add some water, and that'll start the stock. Okay, I just add a little water to it, and that'll uh, you can see it steaming in there. I'm gonna keep my camera away from it because it'll get the uh, lens all fogged up. As that cooks down for just a minute or so, then I'll go ahead and put about oh eight cups of water in the pot. Okay, rutabagas are done. You can see I boiled most of the water out of them, and uh, they're nice and soft, and they're ready. Okay, that's it. Rutabagas and 500 degree eye round roast. Makes a great meal. You got plenty of meat left over to freeze for future sandwiches or, or whatever. Thanks for watching. Bon appetit.